The starting point of our submission was this spreadsheet with about 100,000 rows of sales data. The first step that we took was to create an Ectarius environment which runs either completely in the cloud or on-premise. Here for this requirement we chose to do this in the cloud rather than create a new Ectarius environment in about two minutes. Then we used Power Query which is the standard environment for data transformation to break up the provided data into facts, the actual records, and detailed dimensional data, in this case for two dimensions, product, which um, contains the product hierarchy and region. To do this is very simple um, using the Power Query functionality. We then loaded the data from here with one click into a carry. So in a, to use a carry, you just sign on. So in a carry, the model looks like this. We have um, two dimensions that we've uploaded from Excel, product and region, and it looks like this. So, so it contains the product hierarchy with product name, brand, subcategory and category. Then we have as another dimension, the region. This is the region dimension. Here we saw some improvements. So in addition to the name of the region and the country, we thought we add the city name for the respective region, which helps in our map visualization because the map will work with a particular city, but not with a generic regional description. So we adapted this. To edit this dimension, the only thing I have to do is add a new column. I put in a name and this has now changed the model for everyone that's using this report. So this is a, a central change. Typically this is only used by power users. The second quick change that, will, that I will do here is adding a new scenario again. And I call this Finnext Forecast. So this is the way you can do your models. You can create new models from scratch. You can obviously create new dimensions. Either load them from an existing system, copy them from Excel, or do a manual edit like what you've just done before. So, back in Excel, I took the regions and I've added a city for each region. I see my new field and I can now just copy and paste and my model, my central model will be updated. So here I can see now the cities. And this brings me to the front end and let's start with Power BI. So here we are now on the front end side in Power BI where we are connected to the Ectaris database. What we've done here is now we added a few calculations to calculate um, the cost of goods sold, which is multiplying the unit cost times the unit sold and a few other calculations, um, the gross margin, difference between sales and cost of goods sold, the relative percentage, and then a few variances for actual versus budget and year-on-year -year changes. What we see here now are four visuals that are interconnected and we're showing here the product category for a few measures and the line value for the gross margin percentage. So we see our key category is electronics. This is now over the entire data set and movies, music and books pretty much uh, similar from a revenue perspective. There is a bit of a change in profitability. We can see the books are our top product with 56% profitability or gross margin and electronics um, is 48% a bit lower but still from an absolute perspective electronics are the most important area that, that generate a lot of gross margin. Below this we have another visual that shows now the results by product in a tabular form and the cool thing in Power BI is if you click on something then everything else will adapt so we see now the results here for the product for electronics. You can see the top performer sales wise. If we want, we can sort this now by gross margin, see the best gross margin um, performer. And here we have the 
development over time. Let's go back to the to the total for all products. We can see now we have a nice upward development from a sales perspective, nice upward trend also from a profit perspective. Uh, gross margin percentage pretty much the same. Here we have now a map visualization where we're using the city that we've added in the terrace to make things a bit clearer. Otherwise we would have gotten one bubble here. Now we can see the regions nicely on the map. And we can see here um, based on the color, we have um, a high sales value here and a good profitability. 15 million in the northeast region, 53% margin. Whereas um, Canada is not doing so well, very low profit margin, 17%. And um, $4 million in sales. As, as with everything, if I click on the particular uh, object here, I can see now the situation, how it affects all the other visualizations. So I can see overall there's a fairly low portion of our business in Canada. We have a nice upward trend from a revenue perspective, but the margin is pretty flat. So the question is really here, is it worth continuing this, this region? We are generating um, a margin here of around uh, $400,000. And the question is, is it, how much does it cost us to maintain this market? If it's more than $400,000, it's likely not worth continuing in, in Canada. So this was a general overview of the actual situation i can of course break this down into you know the particular years and everything but let's have a look at this now more from an actual planning perspective on a different report so here we get now an actual budget comparison now we're using one of the filters that I've actually copied the previous report so we got to this result quite quickly and just did a few slight modifications here i'm using now visualization particularly for actual budget variances so i can immediately see now in 2018 uh, we were in all categories below our budget i've got the details now here so if i click on electronics i can immediately see what were the worst performers in electronics so for example from an absolute variance i get now a nice sorting what were the worst performers whether we have the biggest negative variance and then vice versa, I can also switch to the, the positive ones. Um, again, in any level of detail as required. And here also get a breakdown by regions, again, actual versus budget. So a quite nice way of analyzing the actual budget performance. What I will do now is I'll publish this to the web, which gives us a few nice additional features like artificial intelligence insights and the option to share this report just via the web browser. So, and here we see now the results the AI came back with. We obviously know that electronics is our most important category, nothing new here, um, but then it might get interesting. So we see here that the absolute variance for this particular product is fairly high, so we sold much less than expected for Hirschfeld Online. The year-on-year -year profit, interestingly, for the 2018, for the quarters two and one, is much higher than the other quarters. So we did particularly well in, in that area. And like this, we have now a lot of other in, insights that the AI automatically came up with. For example, here we see that the planners in Canada are doing pretty well. The variance to actuals is pretty low and a lot of other interesting insights that the system automatically generates. Next I would like to cover budgeting on manual assumptions. A good starting point for our new budget or forecast is the existing data. So here we have a copy wizard now where the users can automatically copy the specific scenarios for the details that they like. So let's say I would like to have the unit sold, my actual results from 2018, and I would like to use them as the basis of my new 2019 plan. 
And you will see now the power of the Acarius engine. This is a sizable amount of data here. So all data from 2018 will be used as the budget for the new plan. So if we go now to 2019, here we see now the axials were copied to 2019. And what I can do here now is I can now on any level of the model, either on the single product if I want to, or on a higher aggregation. So for example, if I believe for arts and architecture, which the AI has shown it has a pretty high year on year improvement, we could now say the 12,600 here is a bit low, we can raise this to 20,000. And books and miscellaneous, just to demonstrate, we can do a relative change. Let's say there's a 10% increase there. And we immediately see our new total. So, assume your management isn't too happy with the 90,000 sold units. Now you have the option on a very aggregated level to say, okay, we improve that to 100,000. If I press refresh here, I can immediately see how the 100,000 are now broken down to all the underlying categories. So if we go down here, you can now immediately see that the total was automatically adapted. So a very simple and effective way to do top-down, bottom-up planning. In the last part of the demo, I'd like to cover more advanced forecasting techniques. So here we're now in Excel with the Actarius Excel add-in, which gives you all the Actarius features. And we're connected to the same Finnext model that we've worked with before, with all the cubes and dimensions. So we can check this and see that the data that we've just added in Power BI is reflected here. We've got 100,000 total units sold for the budget. And now I would like to add a new advanced forecasting technique and compare the two results. So this will also showcase the benefits of the Actarius approach using an open system, which allows you to integrate any library. So here we could use R, we could use Python, but we can also use new advanced Excel formulas like exponential smoothing using forecast ETS. So we're using this new formula. The first argument is the target date which I'm pointing to here, I'm converting the text to the date, then the range um, that you want to use for historic data from which the foreground is derived. I'm using now from the first date that's in the Finnex data set. And then finally, um, I need to also specify what's the range for the dates for the historic data. And this is it. So we see now the system has automatically forecasted 7,900 and I can just copy this down. So now I have a forecast until the end of 2020, which is immediately reflected here in Excel. If we like this forecast, we can immediately write it back to the Actaris database as well. The changes were now committed. And if we go back, we immediately see now our new forecast and we see it's pretty spot on so using the exponential smoothing method we only have about two thousand dollars difference between what we've planned using the manual data entry method and the exponential smoothing this concludes our demonstration thank you very much for watching this this demo and please don't hesitate to contact us for any further questions